As the company of St. Ursula, we walk together in St. Angela's footsteps during a time outside of time. Rachel reflects, walking the same streets that St. Angela had walked and being where she had been erased the centuries. Heather reflects, walking in those places made St. Angela and her life feel more real and fostered my understanding of her spirituality. Being on pilgrimage called forth my trust. Elena reflects, it's deeper, a deeper sense of St. Angela's life and how her spirit grew in the world where she found herself. Mary Cabrini reflects, each evening's reflection and prayer together wove stronger and stronger bonds among us, so did the fun we shared along the way. Marie Chantal reflects, we went as a group to the source of our vocation. With my companions, the pilgrim walk had a double meaning and spiritual energy. First, we walked in the footsteps of Angela. Second, we were supporting one another. Desenzano became more than a name on a map. We found our place here, at the feet of our pilgrim madre. As pilgrims we too would need her energy and courage. On Lake Garda shore the iconic lighthouse reminded us of St. Angela's words about holy obedience in us like a great light. We enjoyed each other and good food and, of course, Italian gelato. <laughs> On the Via Castello, we walked back through the centuries to the house where Angela Marici was born in 1474. A deeper sense of St. Angela's life began to emerge, a real person, born in this very place. We felt like knocking on the door, as though Giovanni or Caterina Marici would open it and show us their new baby. We looked up in awe, the very window, the very room. Desenzano's castle inspired Angela. I tell you, she said, living all together thus united in heart, you will be like a mighty fortress, or a tower impregnable against all adversities and persecutions and deceits of the devil. We followed the Marici family from the city to the farm in the district called Legretze. Amid the fields and vineyards, it was easy to see how nature fostered the young Angela's contemplative spirit. In this cozy farmhouse, her parents nurtured the family spirit that she would bequeath to us. The crucifixion scene in a room now used as a chapel shows her at the feet of Jesus, united to him in intense suffering and intense love. The Roman Union sisters living there welcomed us warmly with hugs and cool drinks. Rachel reflects, We had visited St. Angela's home. The sky was a cloudless blue. The cascading petunias were bright and cheerful. We had climbed the same stairs that St. Angela used and stood at the same hearth that had kept her warm. We had prayed in the room where she slept and enjoyed refreshments on the loft. We could walk to the well where St. Angela drew water. Marie Chantal, dressed in royal purple, began to dance in the courtyard. What a great idea, I thought. What a wonderful way to celebrate visiting St. Angela's home. I quickly joined in the dance. We were all filled with joy that day. The modern parish church of St. Angela Marici is in the Legrezzi district. Here we prayed in the presence of Jesus, reminded of his mother Mary, mother of the church. 
Once again we found our place at the feet of Angela, farm girl of Lagrette and saint of the church. Now we stood at the Brudazzo. We all knew the story. Midday in the olive grove during harvest. Young Angela's vision. Her moment of call. She did not know what that call would mean for her. In this sacred place we shared the stories of our own calls. The tender places in our hearts where Jesus had drawn us to belong to him. In some way our understanding of our own vocations flows from Angela's. Mary Cabrini recounted our own company's beginnings, how, in 1999, she had looked down this road to where it curved into an invisible future, how, in 2005, she and the late Kathleen Hallinan had planted our tiny branch of St. Angela's vine here, in soil that Kathleen had brought from her home in San Francisco. I could not see where the road led. It was a moment to trust God. I like to know exactly where I'm headed. However, that's not how life works, especially a life lived in faith. I challenged myself to trust that God always keeps his promises, and that the road definitely leads somewhere, and I will eventually arrive there, wherever there is, with God's help and guidance. Remembering that experience gives me a great sense of tranquility. Dear God, Help me to do your will. A peaceful afternoon on Lake Garda. Heather and Rachel wanted to jump in. Marie Chantal advised against swimming in case the waters held alligators and snakes which generated a boisterous laugh from Elena. Between Desenzano and Salo, we passed lakeside towns and the island where Angela must have visited the Franciscan Friars Monastery. In Salo, we could feel the difference that the bereaved young Angela must have felt when she and her little brother were taken to live with their uncle and aunt Biancosi after their parents died. Salo is more urban, busy, and wealthy than Desenzano. We went to Mass in the church of San Bernardino, where she prayed and probably shed some tears about her conflict with the relatives who wanted nothing more than to arrange a marriage for her. Angela had rubbed ashes in her blonde hair to make herself a less desirable candidate for marriage. With holy obstinacy, Angela resisted the ways of the world. We too have felt the stress when others' expectations and our own calling conflict. Here Franciscan friars guided her and welcomed Angela into the Third Order of St. Francis as a dedicated laywoman. Painting showed us that young Angela is still remembered here. Brescia, where Angela would found the company of St. Ursula, gave us even more historical context for our heritage. Walking the same streets that she had walked and being where she had been erased the centuries. This big city's many needs drew her into a more active life and fostered her role as Madre. Women like us were drawn by her spirit. Her loving presence spoke to them of God. She listened to their longings. Loving presence, Angela's way of being with people, is at the core of our mission, too. The company of Brescia welcomed us into the Casa Sant'Angela with its fruitful garden, our sense of our place in St. Angela's global family was expanding.
The Via Agostino Gallo took us to the home where Angela lived for a short while, invited by Agostino and Cecilia Gallo. San Clemente Church was their parish. We imagined Angela walking out the door of the Gallo home and crossing the tiny piazza to the church each morning for Mass. Here, as Mary Cabrini explained, she must have met the great painter Moretto. Heather reflects, before Mass began, we meditated on two of Moretto's works with significance for our Ursuline spirituality. In one, he depicted five virgin martyrs of the early church, Saints Agnes, Barbara, Cecilia, Lucy, and Agatha, all holy women who lived courageous lives for Christ and the world. The second portrays Saint Ursula and companions, such a rich painting, the longer I looked, the more details I noticed, such as the gray-haired companion, or that two of the companions are dressed like secular Ursulines of the time. In church after church, we glimpsed the saints and devotions that had inspired Angela. The church of St. Agatha drew our eyes up to the crucified Jesus. His blood poured over the martyr Agatha and on the altar. The Church of St. Francis reflected St. Francis's simplicity and Jesus's humanity and suffering. The old cathedral, called Il Rotondo, amazed us with its round shape and ancient stones. Here Angela prayed at the center of the Brescian Church. We felt drawn into a reality rich in spirit and in years. At last we had reached the ultimate destination of our pilgrimage, the sanctuary of St. Angela. It seemed that she herself was welcoming us. The climactic moment drew us into deep, silent prayer. We missed our sister Elizabeth, who had not been able to make this pilgrimage, and prayed especially for her before the Madre. St. Angela's bedroom, the gathering room for the first leaders, the crypt where she loved to pray, and the well of the martyrs. Her spirit made all these spaces sacred for us. Here in the crypt of St. Aphra, we were in the very place where our Ursuline life began on November 25, 1535. We encountered Madalena and Elisabetta Girelli who had brought the company of Brescia back to life in 1866. They opened a new era for the company, one that has led to our own day. Heather reflects, In a simple ceremony, we all renewed our commitments, and Elena renewed her consecration before the Madre herself. What a profound moment! Members of the company of Brescia shared it with us and afterwards led us to a little parlor for coffee, cannoli siciliani, biscotti, and other beautiful and delicious treats. Marie Chantal reflects, Today I understand my vocation even better. I praise the Lord for this pilgrimage. <laughs>